are watermelons or other melons good sources of carbs? No. As <laughs> simple as that. <laughs> Look, anything that's got that's fruit, anything that's got fructose in it, avoid it like the plague. Simple as that. I can't stress that enough. Honey, fruit, all these things are the worst carbohydrates you can consume, period. You know, there is two reasons why you don't want to consume any fruit or any honey. One reason, now topical, you know, that's fine. If you want to use topical, that's fine. Um, but consuming it, putting it down your throat, not a good idea. One, the glycation effect is seven. For a lot, somebody being on like us on a carnival diet, we've got less oxidative, less issues. We've got better intracellular antioxidant production and stuff like that because of the nutrition, but we will still have like seven times glycation from baseline. But if somebody's on a sad diet, obviously their glycation, because of the Randall cycle, because these things are staying in the bloodstream for longer, they can have up to 10 times more glycation of their protein structures. Not a good thing. Keep the fructose out, let alone the fructose goes through the same pathway as alcohol, gets converted up. You'll get a whole lot of triglycerides that come out of that, like alcohol produces a whole lot of triglycerides, and you'll get far more inflammation in the liver so definitely not a good idea you know so bad bad idea any fruit and remember these things were seasonal in the past you know watermelons melons um they were all seasonal things at the end of summer and the early part of the fall is when they were available for a, a couple of weeks and then that was it we didn't have them all year round. Just because we've got refrigeration and we can store them all year round, they're not meant to, you know, the fructose is meant to be used to fatten up. Simple as that. So we want to keep away from fructose as much as possible. So bad carb. So on, on that front, that issue. On the other point, when it comes, it is they tend to be also fruit and honey tend to be higher in deuterium. Deuterium is a stable isotope of hydrogen. Unlike H1 hydrogen, the, that hydrogen has one proton in, the, in its nucleus. Deuterium has a proton, sorry, a proton and a neutron. The neutron is the problem. It slows down the mitochondrial, sorry, the ATPase, the nanomotor in the mitochondria that produces ATP, it slows it down. Too much of it will bust those motors. You lose too many of those motors, you'll revert your cell into highly senescent cell and potentially cancerous in the long run because you'll actually start using fermentation because you can't produce enough ATP. So that's a cell that is in deranged and in a bad state in the long run from high deuterium. So these foods are very high in deuterium. Obviously, they're not as high as things like, you know, like seed oils, which are incredibly high. They're just a disaster for the mitochondria in terms of deuterium. But it's not a good idea to be putting high deuterium foods in our diet. Simple as that. Not good for our mitochondria. And over the long run, you you definitely need some deuterium. So, you know, you don't want to go below 100 and you don't want to go above 130. Animal fats are smack in the middle. The grass-fed, 115. The non-grass-fed, the grain-fed, are about 120-odd. But still in the safe zone. The extra deuterium is used within collagen structures to give them rigidity and stiffness. And there's excessive amounts of deuterium in the bones, which is good. It gives them rigidity. Their collagen structures, remember, bone is mineralized collagen. So it gives it rigidity and strength and all that. So there it's fine. You know, the wings of birds, it's fine. They can flap away like mad and all that. But when you have it in the wrong places or 
in the mitochondria, you're going to be damaging your energy production and you won't have enough energy to heal yourself, just barely maintain yourself through fermentation, potentially. That's going to be a disaster long term. The other thing is if you've got excess deuterium in your cells, the cells become stiffer. It's great to stiffen the cells of the wings of a bird so it's much better to flap away. But, but not a good thing for our, our stuff. So when somebody tells me I feel stiff and all that, I go, eh, you got a deuterium problem. you got too much deuterium in your collagen structures. That's why you're stiff. So it's not a good thing to be consuming this sort of garbage. I consider fruit as garbage. It's got very little nutrition and it's got downsides in terms of fructose for fatness and fatty liver and stuff like that. And the other thing, and, gly and glycation, advanced glycation end products, not a good thing. It actually causes problems with folding of proteins and stuff like that. Uh, it's another thing altogether in protein structure and the way it functions. So too much glycation in certain parts like amyloids, mm, you're going to have problems. Amyloids are fine. Amyloids aren't the problem. People that believe amyloids are bad, bad, bad amyloid, better amyloid, are morons. They've got no idea. That's for a future video for me to explain why amyloids are not bad and why the Alzheimer's thing, they got it all wrong. The whole problem is we don't get enough choline and we don't get enough taurine in the brain to deal with the proper functioning of amyloid, you know? to reduce the glycation factor and to control the protein folding and not the derangement of amyloid. That's the problem. Again, it's like LDL. Oxidized LDL is a problem. LDL that's not oxidized is not a problem. You know, you try and lower your, your basically, um, uh, you know, your amyloid, you'll end up very dumb and demented. So these people don't know what they're doing. The reductionist morons that are basically der deranging people, then dealing with a problem, which is high deuterium and high glycation, you know, of protein structures. So they can't fold properly to function properly. So that's the problem. And that's why we do not want this garbage in our diet. You know, fruit is the worst thing you can give yourself or your kids or anyone. Take all the fruit that you've got in your and throw it out. Absolutely throw it out, you know. And if you've got honey, give it to your worst enemy, you know. Don't do that because I'm an Orthodox Christian. We shouldn't be do that, doing that. Just throw it in the bin. Not good. Or leave it if it's one of those like Manuka honey and all that. Leave it for topical use, you know. Deal with bacteria and stuff like that. For topical use, fantastic for, for those purposes. You know, grazers and stuff like that, fine. Keep away from that sort of, that, that crap. Not a good thing, Martin.